Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 471 of the Juice Box Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about bolusing for fat in your food. And it might be easier than you think to figure out. Michelle is here from the website Waltzing the Dragon to try to help us understand. If you're thinking right now, wait, that doesn't make any sense. There are no carbs in fat. I only bolus for carbs. Well, you ever eat pizza and get a weird high three hours later? French fries? Milkshake? Anything like that? Where you think it's gone, you've handled it, but suddenly two and three hours later, this persistent high? If that's happened to you, you're going to love this episode. And let's be honest, if you're using insulin, this has happened to you. We're going to get started in just a moment, but first I'd like to remind you that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Please always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. I'd also like to say right up front that I've put a link in the show notes and a link at juiceboxpodcast.com to Michelle's website. And that link will take you directly to everything that we've spoken about today and the way Michelle talks about it on her space. But I think this conversation will be enlightening, and I hope you enjoy it. At the very end of this episode, I will actually read from Michelle's site in case the conversational nature of today's show uh, didn't let you take notes or kind of walk through things incrementally. So after you hear the whole thing, at the very end, I'll walk you through it one more time. All right, a little more music and we'll get started. This show is sponsored today by the glucagon that my daughter carries, Gvoke Hypopen. Find out more at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. The podcast is also sponsored by the Contour Next One Blood Glucose Meter. You can find out if you're eligible for a free meter. Check into Contour's test strip program or, well, there's a lot more you can do, so I, I can't just list it all. But all the information you need about the Contour Next One Meter, it's at contournext.com forward slash juice box. There's links in your show notes, links at juiceboxpodcast.com. Let's talk about bolusing for fat now with Michelle. My name is Michelle and I am the mom of two kids, Gemma, who is 12, just turned 12, and Max, who is 13. It's Max who has type 1 diabetes. He was diagnosed at just over a year in 2007, actually 14 months to the day. Wow. Was how old he was. Wow, that's uh, that's pretty damn young. Jeez, that it wasn't is fun, young, huh? It was tough. I think it's tough at any age. You know, I think they're just different challenges. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I agree that it's um, that it would. It's not like oh, I got lucky. I was diagnosed at forty six. Perfect age to be like it's. That's not how right. it is. But but that fourteen months thing with the low body weight, not being able to communicate well. It's it's just an and back then. I mean, you didn't even have the ability to to break boluses down into smaller bits. and No, although yeah. he got his first pump at three years old. Mm-hmm. So that's when things really changed in terms of being able to break it down. But before that, for the first two years, we used diluted insulin to try and get um, smaller boluses, like really half as much as you could drop in a syringe. Yeah, I don't know if you did that with Arden. I know she was quite young too. Was she two years old? She was, yeah, she was just after her second birthday. What I did was I took expired insulin, squirted it into a dish, added food coloring to it, drew it up into a needle, and I would practice pushing the plunger slightly to make a drop come out. I just used the food coloring so I could see the liquid and then kind of think about, okay, this much pressure made a drop come out. And that way, when I used insulin for real and the needle was in Arden, I could put that same pressure on. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a, it was a, a good motivator to put weight on her. That's for sure. 
<laughs> I bet. Yeah. I bet. We're still trying. Max is skinny as a rail. And I'm like, where can we put these infusion sets? We need some fat. No kidding. Oh, um, that's something. Yeah. Well, do you know how you ended up on this podcast today? Um, do you listen enough to? Oh, you, you messaged were- me and I responded. Okay. So that's. I'm guessing Jenny had something to do with it. Right. So Jenny and I sat down. So I, I, not to, I mean, I can pull the curtain back here a little bit. Like you, people listening here, Jenny, like every couple of weeks on the show or something like that. She is awesome. She's my favorite person. Um, but what, but what I do to make that for everybody is Jenny and I carve out some time and we power through topics and I do not tell her what we're going to talk about first. So I heard you say that. Yes. So um, <laughs> I said, okay, like we finished a topic and I said, hey, Jenny, next, I want to talk about how to translate fat into carbs for bolusing. And she goes, I-, I don't think I'm the right person for that. And I said, oh, okay, well, that's no problem. And I just put it on my list, like find somebody else. And she says, do you know that blog? And then she told me about your blog, which of course I know because of the the unique name, but tell people you're you're your blog title. So the website is Waltzing the Dragon. Um, and it was started in 2011 with another diabetes mom, Danielle and I started it because we realized that when we talked to other parents, we just got the most helpful tips. Like other parents knew how to put the theory into practice. Yeah. They knew what kind of infusion sets worked. They knew you know, how to get around things like you're talking about, you know, food coloring and right. um, making some really small boluses when you're still using syringes. That's the kind of stuff that we learn from other parents. And we just thought, wouldn't it be awesome if we had a place where the theory and those practical tips existed in one place mm. where I could look up, um, I don't know, illness management strategies at 2 a.m. while my kid's throwing up. And they would be there. I wasn't like shuffling through that junk drawer looking for that handout that I got. Yeah. Um, so that's that's where Waltz and the Dragon came from. It's interesting. I don't want to go too far into the weeds here, but um, it's interesting that you can't just devise one repository and it exists everywhere because that's not how people find out about things. Do you, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the, uh, the best movie I've ever seen in my life, you may never have seen or ever heard of. And, right. and, and so – that other places keep popping up is a is a gift to people because the internet is sort of it's sort of cyclical and at the same time it's bubbled like you you're you're in a sphere you don't realize it you're not seeing the whole internet you're seeing the part of it you see so if somebody you know sure. has a blog like yours that's great and it can be frustrating for people listening i imagine michelle has felt this before too known um how valuable the information you have is and there's just you can't figure out how to get it to more people because you're not mm-hmm. in charge of that it's and, and i figured that out a long time ago if the if people don't know immediately to go to the ada to get information about something right then that means that the ada's information isn't so amazing that everyone who's ever seen it runs around telling everybody else about it right which is not to denigrate mm-hmm. their information it's just that that's not how it works Um, it's why you see somebody who's incredibly popular on Instagram today who 11 months from now you'll never see again because everything just keeps going. But I always felt badly about like all this great information that just, you know, it just kind of, it cycles away. Um, and so the podcast for me is, is an idea of like, how do you bring it alive so that it, 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 it keeps existing and it keeps drawing people in and they keep finding it. Um, so as soon as Jenny said the name of your blog, I was like, I've heard that name a million times. Now, I don't read diabetes blogs, and I never have, but that was always a creative decision. I didn't want to – like, I didn't want to read something you wrote and then find myself saying it and not realize that I had heard it from somebody else, right? So right. I, I always stayed yeah. very kind of insulated around it. But immediately, I was like I, – because how can you not remember that name? Like, Waltzing the Dragon is just so, you know, unique. So anyway, I go there. No, oh, please. And there's all that information. And I was like, okay, I'm going to send someone an email and ask. <laughs> and, and I picked around. I think I, I think I figured out how to get to you through Facebook. So I really appreciate you doing this because I want to take what you know about this one specific subject and kind of blow it up and, and leave it here inside of the podcast for other people. So awesome. Yeah. So tell me how you first realized that fat made blood sugar go up. 
what would happen is we would go somewhere like McDonald's. Like we, we had good control, Mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't say it was fantastic, but you know, our overnights were good. We knew how to handle the kind of foods that we made at home. Max was pretty little, so we weren't eating a whole lot of high fat food. And then when we started to, like I said, go to McDonald's or have a pizza, um, we would have these incredibly high persistent highs that I just kept correcting and correcting and correcting. And he wasn't coming down Mm -hmm. and it was changing. Like it was frustrating for me and it was changing our family's lifestyle. Like I felt like diabetes was winning. I felt like, okay, we're no, we're not going to go to McDonald's and get fries today because I don't want to deal with the high later. We're not going to have pizza tonight because I don't want to deal with being up all night and correcting and correcting and correcting. And that was incredibly frustrating to me because we've always lived like diabetes. We have to pay attention to it, but it's not going to control us. Mm. And it was definitely controlling our family. Yeah. So, so I went looking for ways that I could cope with that. And within a couple weeks of each other, two different people brought up this idea of bolusing for protein and fat. Um, Shannon, who was one of the um, CDEs, one of the nurses at the Alberta Children's Hospital Diabetes Clinic, which is where Max is seen. Um, And also Lorraine Anderson, who is a registered dietitian here in Canada. She worked for, at the time, Animus was um, my son's pump company. And so I'd had contact with her over that. They both brought up this idea of bolusing for for protein and fat, which we had never done. Mm -hmm. Um, But it seemed perfect. And it seemed almost divine that they were both talking about it at a time when I really needed to hear it. Yeah. So we started experimenting as a family. Um, and just to back up, I guess that's, you know, I remember talking at a conference and um, people said, well, wait a sec, you know, I, I guess I should start bolusing for fat because we've never done that. And um, you through the conversation, it came to be that they didn't really have post meal highs due to fat or protein. So, so I was like, well, then you don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, you don't, you don't need to do this unless you're seeing this pattern that is one aspect of, of diabetes management that you would like to address. But many people, I mean, if you eat the same amount of protein in most meals or the same amount of fat in most meals, then you don't need to do anything different. Your insulin to carb ratios and your basal rates after that are probably covering it just fine. Mm -hmm. I think the problem for us as a family was that we tended to eat not low fat, but we didn't binge very often on things like pizza or, you know, burgers and fries at McDonald's. And so when we did, I could really see the difference. Yeah. Well, um, almost divinely yesterday, Arden had a five guys, double cheeseburger with bacon, French fries and and a milkshake. (laughs) So she took her SAT and she came out of the SAT and she's like, I want some food. And I was like, okay. Actually, she took a SAT prep class and the guy said, when she's done, she's going to want to eat and take a nap. And I was like, oh, you don't know Arden, right? Like she won't. Boom. She <laughs> ate this food, walked upstairs and fell asleep. I took was like, the nap. <laughs> but what I knew. He's seen a few of these kids. Yeah, yeah. Right? He's aware of what was going to happen. But what I knew for certain was much like you, Arden's not going to have a cheeseburger every day, right? It's not going to be a meal like that every day. So now we have these fries that are potatoes, which we know are difficult to bowls for soaked in peanut oil. Um, there's the protein in the burger plus the fat in the burger. There's cheese, there's bacon, then there's bread. And then she has a, it, it's a milkshake, a real milkshake, like real ice cream, you know, in right. a milkshake. And right. she cream. says, not ice milk, but ice cream. Can I get an ice cream? Uh, can I get a milkshake with Oreo pieces and Oreo cream? So they put the ice cream in and then they scoop in chunks of Oreos and extra cream of sure. Oreos, right? So <laughs> so what that tells me in my head, the way I think about it is, is that the the range of time that this meal is going to impact her, in my mind, goes right up to about five or six hours. Like that's how I first think about it. And then yeah. and then I just dump in as much insulin up front as I think she can handle. And then any indication that there's going to be a rise gets reattacked along the way. The problem is when people are saying, well, how do I bolus for fat and protein? That's not a real, you know, that's more of a, here's what I do. You can try to see if it works for you. Do you have more of a formula for something like that? Absolutely. Okay. It's not my formula. No. 
But let me back up because, Please. you know, I've heard you talk about how you do like a temp basil mm-hmm. to deal with those sort of rises that come from food. And we tried that. Danielle, the other co- original co-founder of um, Waltzing the Dragon, that's what she did with her son. Right. Is she would set a temp basil after the meal for, you know, whatever in her gut said was the right amount. And she had done all this experimentation. But when I tried it, it was an abysmal failure. Okay. Like I tend to be very sy- systematic anyway. I'm not a, I'm not a kind of a, you know, let's see what this does. Mm-hmm. I want, I want to have something concrete. Um, you and I are probably the yin to the other's yang. But in any case, um, we tried it a couple of times and it just didn't work. Either he bottomed out or he was still super high later. And I thought I do not have the mental energy that it's going to take to experiment with these rates and ratios and, and, you know, pull numbers out of the air for the next two years until we get it right. I just don't. Right. And so um, what both Shannon and Lorraine had brought to me was what's called the Warsaw school program Mm -hmm. Um, in Eastern Europe. um, They bolus for carbs, just like we do here in North America, but there's also a more of a practice of bolusing for protein and fat. So they've spent some time figuring out, well, what does that look like? Yeah. Um, and so that was the program that I did more research on. And so what they basically say is that, um, protein is kind of complicated. Protein, um, creates in your body, creates some insulin, but it also stimulates the release of glucagon, which we know rises, raises blood sugar. And so, um, the effect of it is, a uh, like if you, if all you ate was protein, the effect is a longer rise in blood sugar longer after you eat it so it might be three to five hours if all you ate was protein without carbs it might be three to five hours you give a maybe an extended bolus or a temp basil of i don't know maybe three hours i think jenny said something like 50 percent. i'm trying to remember she had a great way of looking at it um you do that after the meal and then it covers that slow rise of protein um so that's part of what they talk about. Then they also talk about um, the effect of fat, which is not at all unpredictable. <laughs> fat raises blood sugar. Um, and the reason is you get insulin resistant. You've got fat in your bloodstream that um, makes your insulin less efficient, but you've also got um, that fat is harder to break down. So it takes longer to digest. So what we found with Max was that when he would eat a high protein slash high fat meal, he would go low first and then he'd be soaringly high. Mm -hmm. And the reason was if we gave all of that bolus up front, so let's say he had um, a cheeseburger and fries and that would be, uh, let me think like maybe at that age, it was like the McDonald's happy meal. So it might've been like, I don't know, 36 40 grams of carbs for the fries. And then the burger might've been another 20. So we're talking about, um, let's say 60 grams of carbs. And with that would come maybe 30, 40 grams of fat. I'll say 30 at that age. Um, So we would give the bolus for the 60 grams of carbs, which you would think, okay, that's great. If he just eaten the bun and potatoes that weren't, as you say, soaked in peanut oil, um, then that, bolus up front would have covered that and everything would be great if we do the you know correct timing of the insulin and all that but what's happening is because there's such a high fat content it's digesting more slowly so that initial bolus is all getting in before all of the food gets in so he'd go low first which of course we would correct and then that correction would add to his high blood sugar later yeah right so then we were fighting both because it's so incredibly difficult to say to yourself oh I've gotten the meal insulin ahead of the impact of the meal. Now I'm going to correct with food. I actually have to bolus the correction right now. That is a hard leap to make in your mind. But I have to bolus that correction with an extended bolus. Or perhaps if you're still on injections with like a split bolus. Because I need it to Because if I bolus it now, he may go low again. Uh Um, And we found that that depends on the amount of fat too. Like we don't do this. Um, we won't even consider the amount of fat if it's under about 10 to 15 grams. Okay. So under 10, I don't even think about it. Um, 10 to 15, maybe depends what else has been going on in his day. Has he been, you know, fighting some highs? Has he been exercising hard? 
whatever, then I might consider it. But over 15, we will almost always bolus for the fat. Yeah. No, that makes a um, sense. Because that's where we see the impact. Right. I, so getting back to this Warsaw school, yes, please. what they do is they talk about fat protein units. Mm -hmm. And there's this process that they go through to calculate fat protein units. And I don't know. Do you want me to? It's it's all on Waltzing the Dragon. Well, I'm looking at it right fat. now. Do you want me to go through it? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to go through it, basically? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, um, let's, I'll just tell people now. Oh, geez. All right. So it's you're Canadian. So it's waltzingthedragon.ca. And I'm actually. .ca, uh, although the .com will get you there, too. Yeah. Okay. Um, .com will get me there, too. But on this specific page. It's got kind of a long title. So is there a quick way that you can tell people to get through your website to get to what you're going yes, to talk about? Yes, waltzingthedragon.ca slash fat. Slash fat. Okay. I'm doing it to waltzingthedragon.ca forward slash fat. Okay. How fat and protein affect blood glucose. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Go ahead. So there's two articles. The first one, that how fat and protein affect blood glucose is sort of the introduction. Mm -hmm. It just talks about the fact that what we just talked about, right? Protein will raise blood sugar slowly. Um, fat will make you insulin resistant and give you a resistant high mm -hmm. later. Okay. And then the second article is how to reduce those spikes or avoid them might be a better word. Like if you, um, if you use the Warsaw formula, then you, um, you can you can have a pretty close to flat line if you you know sort of tweak it enough for your own personal needs. Yeah, if you actually go through and figure this out. So this this episode really is for people who want to look at a, a nutrition label and say, I want to apply this to that. And I, I do want to agree with you before we start that I don't bolus for all the fat art needs. I do think though that it's an elusive idea to people because I'll take I'll take a very basic example. Every once in a while, like once or twice a year, I make my own potato chips. That's how bored I get. Okay. <laughs> so you start with an amount of, I use peanut oil uh, because it holds a nice steady temperature, right? And um, however much peanut oil you start with, you make your potato chips, you put your potato chips aside, each one's thin and crispy and doesn't even have a hint of oil in it. But then you go back and look at how much oil has been absorbed by the potatoes, and it's a <laughs> fascinating amount of oil, right? So I bet. <laughs> if you eat handfuls of these potato chips, you might as well take a cup, fill it with peanut oil, and drink it. Because chug, chug, that, chug. that's what you're doing eating those potato chips, right, as an example. Or a cheeseburger or, you know, all kinds of things like that that have grease in them have way more grease in them than you imagine. Um, and yes. so – you know, did I know uh, fat from ice cream plus fat from cheese and fat from beef and oil from French fries and potatoes and bread was going to crush Arden? It did. And if I told you that based on the carb count of that meal, even though it was an insane carb amount, I mean, gosh, by the time you go through the burger, the roll, the roll was the roll's like 25 and then I just throw in five for the burger because why not and a couple of more for the cheese and now I'm at 35 and then the fries are probably 50 and now I'm at 85 and the milkshake's probably like 80 and like in my mind, I'm like, this is like 180 carbs, right? And um, even though you give that insulin for that, it comes back to haunt you like a bad ex, Absolutely. you know, every couple of hours Absolutely. It's like it's a, and you're putting in another you know, oh, it's going to happen again. Here's two or three more units. Before you know it, you've used by half more insulin than the actual carb count kind of would indicate. Oh, absolutely. Right. And the amount I've found since we've started bolusing for fat, um, I found that the amount of insulin we use up front mm -hmm. as an extended bolus is a fraction of what we will have to use to correct it. Right. It's absolutely insane. Like we might add a, I don't know, like a three unit extended bolus. Mm -hmm. Um, if we, you know, do it at the front, if we forget to, or when we were learning this, we might have to use like eight or 10 units yeah. to get him back down to range. And so the difference is just striking. Right. There's all kinds and doing of it proactively is, is a huge benefit. You, you, well, being ahead of it, you're using far less than you will if you chase it and Absolutely. When you're ahead of it, you most likely won't cause a low later because it's almost like that food. It, it almost precludes a low from happening. You know, it, it, it's right. almost the um, 
it's sort of the antithesis of the idea when people are newly diagnosed, someone will tell you to like, oh, give them like a little protein and a fat at bedtime if you don't want their blood sugar to fall, like that kind of, you know, that old chestnut, but except you're doing it times like 30. <laughs> and so, yes. so if yes. you're very aggressive, you know, the way I think about it is balancing the impact of the insulin uh, or the impact of the carbs with the action of the insulin and trying to keep everything working at the same time so that when the food's finally digested and the insulin's finally gone, you don't crash later. Um, totally. But yeah, once you're chasing fat and protein like this, especially high fat, you're just, it, it takes so much more insulin than you could imagine. And your basal rate is nowhere near up to the challenge that you've that you've given it now, absolutely. All of a sudden, okay. absolutely. I'm sorry. We're, we're, yeah. I love our conversation, but I'm not letting you get to what you're trying to say. So, no, um, that's okay. Yeah, sure. um, I just want to back up for a minute because you've mentioned a lot of things. Like, if people are curious what sorts of things that we do this for, mm -hmm. um, you've mentioned a lot of them. Like, we talked about pizza. We talked about burgers, cheeseburgers, um, French fries. Funny, if we have French fries, if we have homemade frozen French fries made in the oven, mm -hmm. they don't have enough fat, and we don't need to worry about it. But any restaurant we go to, those fries will need a fat bolus. Yeah. Um, Max loves nachos lately. So the tortilla chips have fat, which we don't really notice if he had, say, tortilla chips and salsa or hummus. But if he has nachos, so he throws all that cheese on top of it, and sometimes even like ground beef on top of that, absolutely, he'll need a fat bolus for that. Yeah. Um, um, real I, ice cream. Right. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to jump on your nacho thing. Uh, Arden loves queso from Moe's, which might, yeah. which might not be all over the countries and everything, but it's a, it's a restaurant you go into, they've fried the, you know, the tortillas right there for you. Um, she buys the queso, we th throw the chips away and she uses like a Tostitos brand like instead. And it yeah. by half makes this an easier project for us. Absolutely. I don't know how, I, uh, let me here. I'll say this and to people who really are probably believe in me listening to the podcast i i can't figure out how to bolus from most chips for arden like i haven't had the nerve to put in enough insulin yet that those chips need and i'm yes, pretty aggressive yes. you, you know so i'm yeah. sorry and you were going to say ice cream in a second real ice cream and 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 yeah. before you, that that's where people's confusion comes in online somebody will say hey you have to do this for ice cream and another person will say, oh, no, you don't. We don't have to, except there's no context. The one person might be actually eating yeah. ice cream, and the other person might be buying something out of the freezer section that's 17 chemicals and might actually have very little right. real ice cream in it to begin with. So Right. Or what we do, we have um, here in Canada a brand called Chapman's, mm -hmm. which their frozen yogurt tastes just like ice cream. It's awesome stuff, but it's got a fraction of the fat. So when we're having it at home, I buy chapman's frozen yogurt because then we don't have to stress about it right. um mcdonald's for example their soft serve is ice milk it's not ice cream so if he had a huge one then maybe we might have to but like if we go to dairy queen their soft serve is ice cream right so it's got a much higher fat content yep. um what peanuts if he has a great big bowl of peanuts we might have to bowl his fat for that um compared to any other nut like not almonds not even walnuts. I mean, maybe he doesn't eat enough walnuts. Um, but like he'd sit down with a bowl of peanuts, you know, like salted roasted peanuts, those we would have to bowl us for. Okay. Um, sometimes chocolate bars, again, it depends on how much fat is in them. Do they have things like cocoa butter or coconut oil in the ingredient list will make me kind of perk up. Mm -hmm. um, oh, all the meats, pepperoni sticks. You know, if you have like a foot long pepperoni stick, they could have 14, 18 grams of fat in a single stick. Um, bacon, yeah. baked ham. Like if we have ham for supper, probably that will have to be bolus for. Um, and on the idea of pepperoni sticks too, like if you can get turkey pepperoni, it's much lower fat. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we'll do that instead. Sausages. Yep. Sausages. Absolutely. Yeah. They have probably like the lighter turkey ones even have like three grams of fat per like regular breakfast sausage. Do you know what I do that you Arden have doesn't know? Uh, I keep turkey and regular bacon in the house, and if she has pancakes or French toast, I put the turkey bacon with it. And if she has eggs, I put the regular bacon with it. And I don't know. Go. I don't know that I tell her that I do that. And there are actually times. Until now. Well, she she won't listen to this. Don't worry, we're good. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. Uh, so um, it, there are times when she'll specifically say, "I want to have French toast with regular bacon," and I'll and I'll go, "Okay, then bolus now." 
And, you know, yeah. and I don't, she doesn't see the difference yet. I'll tell, she'll be on the show one day and I'll tell her little stuff like that. So she knows, but yeah. um, that that's just the kind of stuff that I think is intuitive for you, a person who paid so right. much attention to this, or to me, somebody who talks about it so much that I, it's hard for me to forget it even, you know, but for most yeah. people, most people are not going to think, oh, there's a higher carb value here with some more fat. I won't pair it with the same fat as I you know, I just think that's, it's a bridge too far, especially when you're first diagnosed and in your mind, you're thinking bacon, no carbs. Good. Right. You know, I'm sorry. I, I keep cutting you off, but you're doing terrific. No, no, it's here. that's, that's great. Good, good. Yeah. So but, what were we talking about? Well, well listen, I want <laughs> to tell what people what to do about all that, right? Before we get back to the calculation, you're gonna have to thank Michelle in your own mind here, or at least by visiting her website, because she's got lists in front of her. And I have never sat down and made this podcast <laughs> with anything written down in front of me ever. She's trying very hard. And I am just over here going like, I'm Again, Scott, yin and yang. <laughs> I gotta be systematic. That's why this process works for me. Oh, and that's why I love you being here, because there are... Listen, I think there are a fair amount of people who pick up what I'm putting down, like they used to say in the 80s. But I think there are also people who hear it and whose brains work like yours. And they're like, you got to tell me a number or something, you know, mm -hmm. and I just don't. Yeah, I don't know how to do it. I am literally a person who looked at a plate two nights ago. It had um, chicken and carrots and rice on it. And I looked at it and, and nothing was measured. And I just looked at it and I was like chicken 10 carrots i don't know 10 rice looks like 40 do 65 carbs i literally counted the 60 and then said 65 which even yeah. made me wonder why i counted <laughs> like why didn't i just like <laughs> why didn't i just look at it and go that looks like you 65. have a process to get there sure such a weird thing and um and that that's you know i do believe that most people can with most meals get to it but there's some of these things that we're talking about today that are just they're just too much, you know? And just on that idea of looking at a plate, like I think we've had to teach ourselves systematically over the last 12 years how to do what you do intuitively. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I would measure that whatever pile of strawberries or that, um, you know, mashed potatoes or whatever it was, French fries. Um, I, would, I would guesstimate what I thought, how many carbs were in it. And then I would measure it and see how far off I was. And then from there, if you do that enough times, now you can start looking at a handful of cantaloupe, uh, you know, a handful of potato chips. You can start looking at that and going, oh, this is what I think. But I had to get there through very systematic, like teaching myself, this is how far off you are. Right. Next time, guess a little higher, guess a little lower. Yeah. Um, so I had to get there very systematically and you do it very intuitively, which I admire, but I would never be able to do with that kind of pull a number out of your bum approach. Can you I, imagine you know. that that's my skill? If I put that on my CV, I'd never get a job. <laughs> <laughs> that is a huge skill. It you, is. you were able to figure it out in a way that's quantifiable. Trust me. I The only way I can quantify <laughs> it is to tell people stories about potato chips <laughs> and then hopefully they get something out of it. All right. So – this, so just to point out, I didn't figure out how to make it quantifiable. I took a program that already exists and I applied it to our family and it worked. Well, see, and that was a huge. You're very, yeah. you're very kind to give attribution where it's deserved. And I didn't mean that you made it up out of thin air. I know. You but didn't. you still went and found it and put it into practice. Like you could have showed me that at a certain time in Arden's diabetes. And I would have been like, I ain't reading that. <laughs> that would have been like the end of I've it. I've been told you know? I can complicate things a little bit. Yes, that's my nature to go into it in deep, deep detail. No, um, and just as an aside, all of the information on the website. So it's it's less of a blog and more um, like a collection. an information repository. And yep. only because what you do very easily, sharing your personal experience does not come as easily to me. Mm -hmm. I'm much more comfortable sharing the information than I am sharing my life, which is why I kind of have a love-hate relationship with social media. But there's a whole other topic for a whole other day. Um, but what we've done on Waltzing the Dragon is set things up as beginner, intermediate, and advanced articles. And this one is solidly in the advanced. It's mm -hmm. like not for the faint of heart because it does look intimidating. But if you follow it through, um, follow the example through, it makes sense. Well, let me tell you that anybody who's made it 34 minutes into this wants it. So okay. go, go ahead and give it to them. <laughs> no holds barred. Let me tell you what you do then.
Givoke Hypopen has no visible needle and is the first pre-mixed auto-injector of glucagon for very low blood sugar in adults and kids with diabetes, ages 2 and above. Not only is Givoke Hypopen simple to administer, but it's simple to learn more about. All you have to do is go to givokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. Givoke shouldn't be used in patients with insulinoma or pheochromocytoma. Visit givokeglucagon.com slash risk. Look, if you're the kind of person that's here learning about how to bolus for fat in your food, then your data is important to you. And that data begins with your blood glucose meter. Are you using a good one? Is it accurate? Is it reliable? How do you know? Do you just take the one the doctor gave you or buy the cheapest one at the pharmacy? Maybe you should check into the Contour Next One blood glucose meter. This is the meter that my daughter Arden uses. It is absolutely the most accurate and fundamentally easy to use blood glucose meter that she has ever had. You can find out more about it at contournext.com forward slash juice box. The Contour Next One blood glucose meter has second chance test strips, meaning you can touch some blood, not get quite enough, go back and get a little more without changing the accuracy of the test or wasting a test strip. Might not seem like a big deal, but tonight at 3 a.m. it will be. Is the light on your meter nice and bright? The one on the Contour Next One is. It'll allow you to see in low light situations. And the screen is simple and easy to use. And if you'd like, you can connect the meter to your phone. They have an app. It'll connect by Bluetooth and you can share your data back to your phone and make better sense of it later if you want. But if you don't wanna use that app, you don't have to. You can just use the meter. It's absolutely up to you. Go to contournext.com forward slash juice box to learn more about the meter and all of the products that you'll find on the site. You know it's possible you'll even be eligible for a free meter. It's possible that the meter and the test strips will be cheaper cash out of your pocket than through your insurance company for other meters. This stuff is mind boggling. My mind is boggled. Before I get you back to Michelle and she talks in depth about how she boluses for fat, I'd like to remind you to support the T1D exchange. Please go to t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. Take a few minutes to answer some simple questions and make the lives of people living with type 1 diabetes better. If you are a type 1 who lives in the United States or the caregiver of a type 1 who lives in the United States, this is for you. It is super simple to do. You can do it right there on your phone or your laptop. Again, it only takes a few minutes. It's 100% HIPAA compliant. It is 1,000% anonymous. And the answers you give go a long way towards helping people live better with type 1. That's all you need to do. When you do that, you're helping those people, and you're supporting the show. T1DExchange.org forward slash juice box. Please take a couple of minutes. All right, you ready for Michelle? She's got a whole system here. She's going to tell you all about it. Basically, you start with figuring out how many grams of fat and how many grams of protein are in whatever you are about to eat. So, you know, for your, um, for your cheeseburger and fries example, um, you could go to the company website and see what do they say is the amount of protein and fat in that meal. You could put, um, something at home on a nutrition scale. You could look at the nutritional panel of the packaged food. Um, you could look in a food database, like calorie King has a book, or there are all kinds of apps that do it. Figwe and, um, calorie King and, um, oh, uh, one's escaping me track three. Anyway, any of these ways, it will tell you the grams of protein and the grams of fat. You add those together, um, and then you can convert that into units of energy, which is just kilocalories. I don't fully understand this, except that I know that they've given me a formula, which is to convert the um, grams of protein into kilocalories, I multiply by four. Why? I have no idea. Maybe Jenny as a dietitian has a better idea. I don't, I don't know. I just take it on faith. To convert the amount of fat into kilocalories, you multiply by nine. So let's say uh, the example that I've given on the website is for an ice cream bar covered in chocolate with nuts. Real ice cream, as we talked about. It's a Klondike bar 
you know, ice cream, chocolate covered. So on the nutritional panel, it says there's three grams of protein and 14 grams of fat. So I multiply the three grams of 14 by four, the 14 grams of fat by nine. And I come up with the um, total kilocalories, which um, I've got here is 138. 138 for the fat. So that's 14 times. No, 138 for both. So it is um, 12 kilocalories of protein and 126 kilocalories from fat. Again, those are just units of energy. Okay. You just think about how much energy your body can take from that. So then you add those two together, you come up with that 138. Mm -hmm. From there, you calculate the fat protein units, which is just dividing by 100. Again, why? I don't know. Gotcha. The Warsaw School people know. Dietitians know. I just do what they tell me to do. This gives me fat protein units. The reason that this is relevant or why that number is important is because it tells you how long to extend your bolus. Okay. So they have a handy little chart that just tells you if you come up with one fat team protein unit, you extend your bolus over three hours. If you have four fat protein unit, fat protein units, you extend your bolus over eight hours. So they just got this chart that's got one, two, three, and four fat protein units. I just look at the chart and that's what my extended bolus is. Hmm. So then we go, we got fat protein units, but how do we figure out how much extra insulin we need? Okay. What is the size of this bolus that we are going to extend? Um, and what they say to do is to multiply by 10 and divide by your insulin to carb ratio for that time of the day. I often don't remember what it is. So for Max, like his insulin carb ratios vary from 5.2 to like 7.5. I just pick six Mm -hmm. because I mean, it's sort of, I I like to be very precise because there's so many variables with diabetes that I like to make as many of them a constant as I can so that there's less variability overall and less, you know, mess in the system. Mm -hmm. But by just picking six, I sort of acknowledge that there is variability in this, that even if I'm absolutely precise, it's still a different day. It's a different food. It's a different, you know, he's eaten different things with the meal. Right. So I just pick six because it can be complicated and that works for him. Mm -hmm. But like when I look back at this example, I was using 15. So when he was younger, his insulin to carb ratio was one to 15. That's a very different thing when he was six than it is now that he's 13. Sure. So that's where the insulin carb ratio does matter on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. But whether or not you call it six or 6.5 or seven probably doesn't change things a whole bunch. It's still a heck of a lot closer than the way it was going to go without the gas. Right. Right. Absolutely. So if you do that, you come up with the number of units. So in this case, if I took that 138, Mm -hmm. Um, and I divided it or multiplied it by 10 and divided it by his oh. IC ratio, which for this example was 15, then I come up with 0.9 units of insulin. So I would have given him 0.9 units of insulin extended over three hours, zero, 100, nothing up front, everything extended over those three hours and, for the Klondike candy bar when he was six years old. When he was six years old. And that was that the entire bolus or is the 0.9 the extra on top it, of just the extra for fat. Right. So whatever the carb amount was in the candy bar, I would have bolused up front and pre bolused again, depending on the amount of fat, you might not pre bolus, but right. this doesn't have a huge amount of fat. This only had um, 14 grams of fat. Gotcha. So um, all the carbs up front with a pre bolus as you normally would. And then after he's eaten and sometimes a couple hours after he's eaten, um, that's when the extended bolus comes in. So now, you're... when it becomes a couple hours after is if there's a huge amount of fat, mm-hmm. then even setting this extended bolus right after he eats means he will soon. go low first. Yeah. So you have to understand then when that second wave arrives and be just appropriately ahead of it with a pre-bolus. So you're pre-bolusing the right. second wave, but using a number right. that you can rock solidly believe is going to handle the impact of it. Because right. you use the formula. Because I used the formula and I did some experimentation. Right. So let me take this one step further and say, and maybe I should have said this earlier for anybody who's not listening to the whole thing. When they use the Warsaw program, they get a really high um, incidence of lows. So if you use it as I just described it, 
your chance of going low is what I think and what many people in Canada think is unacceptably high. This is not best practice according to the clinical practice guidelines. And that's run of, one of the reasons why. What's the number? Yeah. So really, I, I'm sorry. I find that when I talk to people, one of the most fascinating things is the word low and high um, is not quantifiable between people. So if you okay. said, if you said to me, um, this will make you low. Yeah. I would, think, I would be saying under 3.9 millimoles per liter, or I think for you guys, I've got my chart here somewhere. That's 70, right? Okay. So under 3.9 or 70 milligrams per decil year. Okay. And so for me, if you see, if you were talking to me and you said, oh no, this is going to make Arden low, I'd think, oh, like under 60, you know, which would. It could. It absolutely could. Yeah. And it, and it, and it could. It's just, it's, it's tough to just say, it's this the one thing I've learned from doing the podcast is that people's idea of high and low are different. Like when I say, absolutely. oh my God, yeah. Arden got really high after a meal, I mean 180 to 200. Nine, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> right. and, and when other people say it, they're like, my graph is just flat across the top. I don't know how far over 400 I yeah. am. So we can't yeah, have tops a- out at 22.2. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. we can't have an equal conversation when you think high means 400 and I think high means 180. Sure. Right. So I yeah. just will always like to make sure that we're talking about that way. So I'm going to go back over this because I am not the target audience for this. And I think I understand what you just told me. So that's kind of exciting okay. for me as a person who could not Test make time. You don't realize how bad I was at school. So, um, <laughs> So you take this, and it hasn't hurt you one little bit, has it? I don't know. My wife mocks me openly about it sometimes. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, in that in that vein, perhaps. So you have this example here of a of a an ice cream bar uh, that has three grams of protein and fourteen grams of fat. It also has twenty seven carbs. So you would have taken this ice cream bar. You would have known from experience. I don't know. It needs a ten minute pre ball. It's not too much for your son. Whatever 27 carbs was in his um, insulin to carb ratio, you put that insulin in, he eats the bar. But then you take this information, three grams of protein, you multiply the protein by four, you come up with 12 um, kcals, which are our total kcal from fat and protein. What does kcal stand for? Why don't I remember? It's a unit of energy, kilocalories. Kilocalories. Okay. So you come up with 12 then you take the fat from the bar, which was 14, and you multiply that by 9, 126. You combine these together, you get 138. You take that 138, you divide it by 100. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. That and gives you fat protein units. So then you came up with 1.38 fat p- protein units. Is that correct? Yep. You, totally. You just rounded it to one. Because the, yep. ch- the chart only really works. Because the chart says one, two, three, or four. Right. And one fat, t- one fat protein unit indicates a three-hour extended bolus. Two indicates a four-hour. Three indicates a five-hour. Four indicates an eight-hour. Yes. And so, so you came up with using his ratio. Now, this is the part where I got a little behind. So you took the 1.38 times 10 because that was his ratio. Is that right? No, because no. there are... Um, 10 fat protein units. Um, so fat protein, fat and protein get converted to a certain amount like glucose. Okay. So one fat protein unit is converted Mm. in your body about the same as 10 grams of carbs would be. Okay. So if you didn't eat any carbs and you ate one fat protein unit, that would be like eating 10 grams of carbs. Okay. This is the moment where I'm going to say this out loud and take advantage of the of, of how popular the podcast is. The person who made the conversion calculator for the website, if you're listening to this and you think you could program this into an app for online, please oh, contact me. Go for me. it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and that'd be awesome. Oh, wait, and you would you would get that code uh, for your website if you wanted it a million Ooh, percent. Oh, thank you. Um, so, okay, so then you so you do this this last bit here. Uh, and yep. you, and you can, you came up with, it's going to be 0.9 cause you rounded again. Cause you came up with 0.92, you rounded it to 0.9 because that's how the yep. bolt, the pump would do the it. The pump then wouldn't give 0.92. Right. And you extended that over three hours. Now in this specific scenario, how long after the, the ice creams consumed, did you end up putting this in? One hour. Okay. So we started the extended bolus at one hour after he started eating. So is that an indication to you that that ice cream cone has about a four hour life in his body? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, well plus the pre-bowls. maybe longer because 
at the end of your extended bolus, that insulin is going to last for another three hours. Yeah, it's going to have right? a tail as well. And I've heard Jenny talk about how fat can affect you for, um, you know, she said eight or 10 hours. We have at times found that Max is still resistant the next morning. Like we're talking 12, 15, even 18 hours later. still be there sometimes. Um, people. Right. It depends on how much. Right. It, not the kind. And, of- and other things like how active is he? How, how insulin sensitive is he right now? Or has he been, you know, has he had a long weekend and been sitting around on video games all weekend? Yeah. In which case, all of this compounds. Mm-hmm. Hey, let me tell you a fun story while we let this sink into people's heads before we move forward. Uh, all right. Two hours ago. There I'm, is an easier way to do this, I, too. Let me just worry. say. We're going to get to that. I take the whole thing and make it easier. We're going to do that. Go don't ahead worry. with your funny story. Yeah, but Michelle, listen. You got to tease it out. I want people listening through the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? All right. Yeah, my listen through rate is important to ad sales, just so you all know. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so listen to the end. I go um, pick up Arden's contact lenses today. They're, they We placed an order and they had to be picked up. And I get there and I'm in a in, a, in an office that, I mean, I've been taking my kids to for so many years. There's a lovely woman at the front who's been there forever. And we're standing around talking. And uh, I said to the person that was helping me, hey, I got to go. I have to go record a podcast. And um, he said, what's it about? And I said, oh, we're going to talk about how fat and protein impact blood sugars kind of more long term than people that, who use insulin you know, probably think they do. And the woman behind the counter goes, I have diabetes. I've literally known her for a wow. decade. I had no idea. She goes, I struggle with this all the time. She goes, what are you doing? And I, I started explaining it to her. She's like, how do I find this podcast? And she's like writing it down and showing me her phone and asking where podcast apps are and stuff like that. And I walked out and I just thought like, how did I not know? But there she was. She had a Medtronic pump on her belt. She keeps it covered with her shirt. She's wearing a sensor. Nobody can see it. And um, and there she was. She's Diabetes like, in the wild. She said, this yeah. topic vexes me. Just It, it just mm. it controls my life. And she's like, even if I mm-hmm. just eat a piece of chicken, I'm, I'm down to just trying to eat a piece of chicken. And two hours later, my blood sugar tries to go up 40 points. And I said, well, yeah. yes, if your body can um, take that protein from that chicken and it converts it and stores it as glucose and then it impacts your blood sugar. And she's like, I have no idea. I've had diabetes for decades. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, okay. I said, so, okay. Very hopefully. common. Yeah, yeah. It just, it was crazy. I mean, very, like if I told you, I just thought to myself, hey, I have a little extra time here. I can make it to the store and back again to pick up Arden's contacts. Mm-hmm. Like I just tried to squeeze. And you were supposed it. to be there because she's supposed to hear your podcast. It was so really lovely. Like I, awesome. I, I had a very nice feeling about the whole thing. Okay, so now we just went through something, which let's be honest, is not that convoluted, but it's more than but what it, most people. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, right. So you're telling me there's a simpler way I could have gone through this. What what would that have been? Well, first of all, um, as I said, we don't bolus for protein, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, because we found when we first started using this formula, including protein, Max always went low. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the things about protein is that it really only affects your blood sugar in a significant way um, if you're not eating carbs. And we're a pretty carby family. I mean, I don't, I think there are very few times when Max, like he wouldn't sit down and have like a steak and a salad. He wouldn't eat a burger without the bun. Mm -hmm. Um, I would do those things. I have celiac disease. So, you know, I tend to be, I would eat more just protein alone, but um, he wouldn't. So, in a way, because carbs are the body's preferred fuel source, um, if he's got carbs in there, then it's just going to use the carbs for fuel. Okay. And and the protein isn't going to have the same effect as if he had protein without carbs. Okay. So like think, you know, steak and a, and a baked potato, you probably don't have to bolus for the steak, although it sounds like you do and it works. Mm-hmm. So maybe there's something I'm just missing there. But, 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 but a steak and a salad, a bit, you though. would. Yeah, yeah. I don't do a ton. Like red meat, right. I did a little bit, you know, and if it's and if it's more lean, I do a little less. I just I just throw five. I'm always throwing five. Like because you know how yeah. like kids will put like a little dip in a bowl, it's like it's buffer. a little honey mustard or something like that. People are like, how much is in there? I'm like, I don't know, five more. Everything's always five more because it isn't it interesting. Think for everybody who's listening, think how specific you are with your insulin. 
oh, this is 43 carbs and it's going to be 14.8 units or something like whatever you end up doing. You're preaching to the choir here. And you're never right. You're (laughs) never right. right. (laughs) Right. and, And you're more frequently never right too weak than you are too heavy absolutely right because like, everybody you're, you're speaking my language right, right, because right. we laugh because if we go out to a restaurant and there's no carb information you're like at a mom and pop place so there's no you know boston pizza website to go to or whatever yeah. you're just you're there and the food's there and you have no choice but to pull a number out and just go blah it's this many carbs right. and it's funny when we do that quite often it his blood better. sugar is much better than when we systematically count it. Yeah. Um, now, that being said, we still systematically count it because I think if I did that all the time, it would um, You'd miss not necessarily work yeah. out in our favor. No, yeah, there'd be but when one we have time to, it works yeah. great. <laughs> where you'd be right. in the parking lot going, well, Max can't stand. <laughs> and, yeah, but, uh, yeah, exactly. No, I, I think I, I'll tell you a measurement I use very privately in my own head when you're out in a, in a restaurant. If it's a chain, it's more. Because I always think there's more mm-hmm. just stuff in it that's not food. And the better it tastes, right. there's more. Because yes. the better it tastes always to me means food and uh, means fat and salt. Absolutely. Right? So yeah. the better it tastes, yeah. the, you know, the more it hits your pleasure center and makes you go, I don't care about anything else in the world. The more you feel like that, the more insulin yep. it's going to take. Add so. five units of insulin. Yeah. yeah. Yep. More. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I just – it. it it became like evident as Arden got older. And now I'll tell you, you know, now that she's a full blown lady, um, there's a whole other aspect of it. There's, a, you know, there's some foods that hit her differently now that she's more mature than they did when she was a kid. And I don't even know if that's, if I'm right or wrong about that. It's just, it's what it is. And there's some foods lately. There's a simple one. She likes these little baked Ritz crackers. Right. So okay. so not the regular round Ritz crackers that everybody thinks of in the in the sleeve. Those those we bowl is pretty easily carb for carb. But these ones that come in a bag that are like Ritz chips or something like that. I just take whatever the carbs are and add half. If it's 20, it's 30. If it's 30, it's you know, it's it's 15 more on top of that. And these things just hit her. I don't know what's in them, but it ain't good. You, you know what I mean? Have you looked at the label? Well, no, that would take a lot more effort. I just figured out how much insulin. Do you I'm just for? curious about how much fat and maybe even protein is in there. I'm gonna look, but or if it's a glycemic index thing, like yeah. if they, you know, if they digest super slowly, then something because they be hit it. her like a truck, and then the truck stays parked on top of her for a while. Yes, uh, it doesn't yeah. pull off and go. Oh, I'm sorry, it just stays there. And, and the reason I don't look too deeply into it, and this might be helpful for people too with younger children. Is because she will cycle through these. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know if other people's kids do that too. Yeah, it'll be gone a month from now. So, who be really a cares? moment where she'll, I'll go, Hey, did you want some of these crackers that you love? And she'll be like, I hate those. I'm done with those. And then she'll never eat them again in the rest of her life. Yeah. And so, you go donate those six boxes that you just got on sale. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, here, this will crush <laughs> your blood sugar. Congratulations. Yeah. They're free now. Uh, but, yeah. but, but no, seriously, it's, um, she doesn't do the same thing for long. She's on a grape kick right now. I have four pounds of grapes in my ref- four pounds of grapes in my refrigerator wow. right now. Cause she just two weeks ago said, Hey, everybody, I'm doing grapes now like they're a thing. So let's stay yeah. stocked. And I was like, Okay. So they're she, worse things. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, Okay, whatever. Yeah. And then they'll be gone. Like, you know, I'll try to give her grapes three months from now. And she's like, Oh, I don't eat grapes. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> you know, um, anyway, I'm sorry. So, Oh, okay. There's an easier way to do this. Right. Okay. (laughs) So what we do um, is we, first of all, like I said, we don't include the protein. Mm -hmm. So what it comes down to for us is that we just take the grams of fat. We multiply it by 0.09, which is the times nine and divided by a hundred all in one step. Uh And then um, I might multiply it by nine or 10. So for, that's what's the multiplication for? That's the one 10 grams of carbs for one gram, one fat protein unit. Okay. So we, because he still sometimes goes low if we use this with a 10, if he's in a good place and things are, you know, he's insulin sensitive and all that's going well, then I will reduce that number. So when he was younger, 
I might reduce it all the way to eight. Mm -hmm. And so that's another way to um, make it more conservative, reduce that risk of bottoming out gotcha. afterwards. Well, I like the, I'm um, going to ask you to go through it again in a second, but I like the yeah. way you just said, if he's insulin sensitive and you didn't mean that in a bad way, you meant if the insulin's no. working the way I expect it to work in this right. moment. So I'm going right. to get a reaction that I expect. And by expect, I mean, ratios, basal rates are all doing what we expect them to do. Absolutely. Right. Okay. And as an aside on that, like I'll notice that they have a long weekend. Like they just had a five day long weekend from school. It was teachers convention and things by the fifth day, because he hasn't been walking back and forth to school. He hasn't had gym class. Um, he's been spending more time on the computer or hanging around with us, watching movies and that kind of stuff by the fifth day, but probably the third day, really. Um, I know that we need to crank things up a bit. Yeah. And if I forget that, then it comes back to tell me we need to crank things up a bit. Being sedentary to me hits exactly like an old infusion Huge. set. Do you know what I mean? Yep. You know, when you're at the last part of your infusion set and it's starting to get like, suddenly it's like, this should be a unit, but it's two units. And, and, you know, it almost feels like it almost can feel like a leaky site. It's almost like, oh, Absolutely. everything I'm yep. putting in there is not getting in there, is it? Like, but, but it's wrong. Yeah. But instead it's everything I'm putting in there is not having the impact that it should because he's right. been sitting around for a week or etc. I I'm I right. I'm glad people can follow this. This is good. So on those days, yeah. I will absolutely lose use 10. So using 10 would be more aggressive because mm -hmm. you're multiplying it by more. Okay. So go using through, eight would be more conservative. Do it, do it with me one more time. So th let's just put 10 grams of fat in this imaginary thing we're eating. Yep. How do you do it? 10 grams times 0 0.09. Okay. Should I ask? Times mm -hmm. 10. Okay. Divided by the IC ratio, which for him right now is six. We just use six across the board. So in that, it, so 10 times 0 0.09 times 10 divided by the insulin to carb ratio. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So you'd end up coming up with what? Nine divided by six. Did I miss something? Hold on a second. Let's just do this the easy way. Shall we? 10 divided 10 times 0.09. Oh, hold on. I it's zero. Hold on. 10 times 0 0.09 times 10 divided by four. It's 2.25. 2.25. That would be Arden's. Because Arden's okay. insulin to carb ratio is like four. Four. So if there were 10 grams of fat in this thing that Arden ate, I would take 2.25 units and extend it over three hours. Um, what did we come up with the, the fat protein unit? We have to pause at the grams of carbs times 0.09 because that tells us our fat protein units. Right, hold on. My stupidity is so that's So that's 0.9. Okay. So just under one. So yes, it would be three hours for yep. three hours. So now, and I should point out that we never actually would do this for 10 grams of fat. That wouldn't be enough fat for us to bother. Right. But just it's great it to, for, for example purposes, yeah, for well, nice round numbers, to, to, for, for round numbers and simplicity, yeah. which is clear. But so that's a good point though, because, and why is that a good point? Let me Google something for a second. Um, what I say? Five guys, five guys, fries, fat. While you're Googling that, I just want to point out that um, they go to a local mall to do um, Pokemon Go, to mm -hmm. do Pokemon hunting, and they always stop for lunch. This is my husband and um, Max. And A&W is the usual meal on that day, and it has 64 grams of fat yeah. for a cheeseburger, fries, and a pop. Listen to this. Uh, this is from the Food Network. A large French fry has an unbelievable 1,300 calories, 57 grams of fat, 1300 you milligrams of sodium. So you're going to get crushed if you eat, yep. if you eat this, because not only all of this, but the sodium is going to dehydrate you, which also slows Good down point. the insulin. Work. We never even take that into account. No now one I'm thinks about that. that right? Start pulling numbers out of my bum like you, Scott, because <laughs> it's all hopeless. <laughs> Tastes good more. Um, so, so there, there's a good example. 57 grams of fat in just those fries yesterday. So leave the milkshake yeah. out of it. Leave everything else out of it. When I'm telling you she used, you know, just multiple tens of units of insulin more, it really isn't that crazy because in in this scenario here, if we just round this to 60, right? 
Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. If we just round this to 60 grams of fat for Arden for the French fries yesterday, and I do 60 times 0.09, I get so five, five, five fat protein four, units. Right. Times yep. 10, 54, divided by her insulin to carb ratio is four. She needed 13 and a half units more insulin for the fat in those French fries than the carbs in those French fries indicated. Right. And think right. about how many carbs were in the French fries. So hold yep. on a second. Five guys, large fries, carbs. Okay. There are 72 carbs. So so we've just decided Arden needed 13 and a half units of insulin for the fat in five guys' fries. Now let's look at it as carbs. 72 divided by four. 18. So while everybody's wondering why their blood sugar gets high and they don't understand why it takes so long to come down, Arden needed 31 and a half units of insulin just for the French fries, but it had to be stretched out over yes. the impact of the carbs because of how the oil is holding it up, which we've right. talked about a million times this podcast. And anybody who's listened to the Pro Tip series knows the food goes in, it starts digesting, you're leaching out carbs. The more fat that's in your stomach, the slower the digestion goes, the longer it takes, the longer you're slowly just basically in, infiltrating your blood with car, with, with sugar. So, yeah. so that really is telling, honestly. And with that amount of fat, like I said, for the Klondike ice cream bar, mm -hmm. we would start the extended bowls one hour after. And by the way, we just say... Alexa, she's going to listen to me now. We would just say, Alexa, set a one hour fat bowl as timer, um, which usually results in hilarity because she often says five balls timer. But anyway, all <laughs> that aside, um, we just set a reminder right? so that we actually do that an hour later. If he had this much fat, mm -hmm. um, if I did that an hour later, he would um, bottom out first. Okay. Because the food would take that much longer to reach his bloodstream. And the, the easiest, even the carby food. Yes. And the easiest explanation for that for most people is pizza who, you know, you look yep. at pizza and you go, this is 30, 30 carbs a slice. You put it all in and 45 minutes later, your blood sugar is 40 and you're like, I don't know what to do. And you drink a juice and that doesn't work. And you drink another one. And then all of a sudden the fat and protein hits you and the juice hits you and you're 400 and you don't know what to do. Right. 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 And that wasn't a problem with the amount of insulin you took. It was a timing issue. Timing. That the insulin got in before the food did. I was talking to somebody so, the other day and I said to them, in the end, all of the things that we just talked about here, all we really said was right amount of insulin at the right time. It's all timing yeah. and amount. It's Fully. always, it's always Fully. timing and amount. And fat messes with that in a big way. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just that you get that high, it's that it takes so much longer for it to digest that you can go low in the first place. Okay. Or like you've said on other podcasts, you got this beautiful number and you think, I nailed that. And then four hours later, you know, you're through the roof yeah. and that's why, because you might've nailed the first two hours of it, but not the next eight. All right, Michelle, there's one thing I was, I'm still lightly confused by. So it's the idea of one FPU, two, three, when we did it in the short version, we just said uh, 60 times 0 0.09 times 10 divided by insulin to carb ratio. Yeah. How, what, what would how would I know if it should be over four hours or five? What number would change in that? Scenario? We stopped, we stopped at the 60 times 0 0.09. So that's the fat protein units. Okay. And that was 5.4. So for five units, now here's, here's the other thing that we run up against with 60 grams of fat. Mm -hmm. um, the chart only goes up to four fat protein units. Okay. So beyond that, I take the Scott Benner approach and I just guess more. Okay. So for five units, I might say 10 hours because four fat protein units would be eight hours. So for five fat team protein units, I might go 10 hours or maybe 12. Okay. Um, oh, I, okay. So my confusion was, is that our original number that we started with kept us in the three hour range. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Because we were only yep. at 60. If we would have gotten to, right. is there a, is there a cheat in there? Is there a number of FPUs that makes it to like in your mind? I know you don't think of it this way, but pretend you were me for a second. And no, sometimes I do. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, like, how many, how many, how many kcal's would tell you, okay, this is going to be four hours? 
Do you have that number in your head? Um, no, but I could reverse engineer it. Like four hours would be um, two fat protein units, is it? Yep. Um, so then two fat protein units would be 18 grams of fat. Okay. So if you were looking at somewhere around 20, 20 grams of fat, mm-hmm. you might say, yeah, let's extend that four hours. Okay. You so- can totally just do that shortcut. The other thing is insulin is insulin. So once you know that you're looking at a four hour extended bolus, you could do a temp basal mm-hmm. that will equate to the whole thing, to yeah, the same thing. I would normally do that because too. It, you know, it's your actually bump, what- pump doesn't care if you do an extended bolus or temp basal. It's the same thing. It just draws it out. Yep. It's whatever makes sense to you in your head and whatever you can. Mm-hmm you know, work so, with. Easy. So with 60 for the French fries, that actually puts us up into the more like the five, six hour range, right? Yeah. Yeah. When Max has A and W and he's 64 grams of fat, we extend it over 12 hours, 12 hours, which I believe is the upper limit of his current. Pump. And, and when you're doing that with a small person, what you're really telling the pump is I need extra basil for the next 12 hours because it is a small, sure. it's a smaller amount of insulin. Once you break it up over 12 hours. Yeah. Okay. Well, that so makes you sense. could convert that into temp basil. I guess my problem with that is like, he's still growing. So when he goes to bed, he's got growth hormone mm-hmm. and his basal rates almost double. So for me to go, okay, how much of this would it, you know, to tell it a temp basil, I would have to sort of figure out, okay, well, between the hours of 11 PM and 2 AM, his temp basal would be double. Yeah. But earlier in the evening, it's not going to be double. Like, it's so I lot. just go extended bolus. Yeah. Just give me, give me whatever, an extra five units over 12 hours. Yeah. Michelle, the way if you, if I'm sorry, if you've heard me say this, you'll have to suffer through it for a second, but I just think of, I, I've found a number of different ways to think about it over the time. There's an, uh, an impact range that the food has, you know, mm-hmm. from the minute it goes in until it's done. And I, and I try to cover that range with a heavier blanket of insulin. Sometimes I think of it that yeah. way. Sometimes I just yeah. think, you know, just basically like, oh, it's going to be cold overnight. I need an extra quilt. And so, you know, my blood sugar is going to try to go up between here and here because I've eaten something with fat in it. I'll just lay something heavier in the form of basil over top of it to hold it down. I've I've described sure. it as carpet bombing before, you know, just picking the picking the range where the food is and just try to decimate it. You know what I mean? Just stay yeah. on top of it. There's all different ways to... I mean, however people can picture it in their minds, the idea here is that this fat is going to force your blood sugar up over over hours, and the amount of hours is going to depend on how much fat it is and all kinds of other stuff. And and still, what we're talking about, while this while this method doesn't work for it, the the idea still exists that for some of you, protein will cause a rise a number of hours later too. And if you can learn that you can count on that, that a chicken breast with my meal is going to mean that two hours after I eat, my blood sugar is going to try to go up 60 points. Well, then an hour after you eat the chicken breast, you could do a temp basil to stop that. Or an hour and a half after you eat the chicken breast, you could bolus for it even. So my problem was always how heavy of a blanket do I need? And how long am I going to put it on? So do I need that, you know, that light summer blanket? Do I need the really thick duvet? Mm -hmm. Um, What do I need here? And and so for me, using this formula told me, how heavy should the blanket be? And are you going to have it on all night or just through the beginning of the night or what? So for somebody like that who um, is eating the chicken breast in a salad and no carbs and therefore needs to bolus for it, you can use the same formula. But just the same way that I leave protein out of the formula and only do fat, you can leave fat out of the protein out of the formula and only do protein. It's fascinating, and I do mean this in a in a very kind way. Like so I, I, I would imagine you could take this wrong, so don't. But the people who I've seen ask me for this information, as near as I can tell through the internet, have a similar personality to yours. What a shocker! Yeah, no, and it's I it, don't it, take that the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fascinating because where those are the people who hear me go, I don't know, put in more and just don't let it cause a problem. <laughs> They're like, no, <laughs> but no. But when no. I tried that, Scott, because it my brain work doesn't work that way. When right. I tried that, it just failed, mm-hmm. and and I was discouraged, and I was like, I cannot put in the energy that it's going to take to keep trying and experimenting and figuring it out and trying this and trying it. I just can't. And the other thing is you have this incredible memory 
I have asked to be introduced to people that I have met before, <laughs> people I have had in my home at my dinner table, I have asked to be introduced to. And so I don't have that memory. So I, if I don't write it down systematically and yeah. come up with a process that works, then I'm starting over. Every time I sit down with that food, it's I'm like, like the first time. I don't know. Let's see what I, we're going to try. So I can't take credit for memory. It just occurs to me. Like I just look at mm -hmm. it and then the answer's in my head. I don't have a process to come to it. Uh, and I can also that's a gift. That's I, awesome. Oh, please, it's a, this is an odd gift to have, but uh, <laughs> I would much rather but be able Hanley, to run. Given really... the kids you've got, that's incredibly valuable. But Michelle, what if I ran a, a sub four sixty and could catch and was six feet five? Then I could pay someone to do this. You'd have a different <laughs> gift, sure. <laughs> but but I, it, it isn't. It, this conversation has been uh, in an extended way interesting for me because I can see now that you don't think in pictures. And I think in pictures. No. Right? Yeah, I and, think in numbers and language. Right. Yep. And the people who I hear describe me as, oh, it's this guy. He's just really aggressive with insulin. I was like, oh, they think in numbers, not in pictures. Mm. Right? I sound yep. like a lunatic who's just yelling like, pour it on, see what happens. And <laughs> But I don't- But you do that based on your sense of what is appropriate. And I'm saying, I don't have that sense. Yeah. So I can take this formula. And then once I know- then, I mean, you don't have to go through the formula every time. It's not like I spend all my time, you know, doing Warsaw calculations. Right. Once you know and you have that same food again, you just use the same thing. And and I literally kept track. I said, so what was the result? Okay, he went low first. Okay, I'm going to give maybe um, less upfront and extend it more. Or I'm, you know, I could tweak from there. But once we've tweaked it and we get success, well, then when we have McCain's frozen pizza, this is what we do. Yeah. Or when we go out to A&W on Pokemon Go Day, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. And so I think it gets us both to the same place, but just a different path to get there. Oh, no. I think the last 30% of the process is the same for you and I. I think it's the mm -hmm. how we understood it, how we made the decision, and when we use it, that's yours is more calculated and mine's more like that feels like five units to me. But, you know, and, and it also puts me in a position then when I get one that I don't know, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know how much fat is in that. I don't know how much protein it is. I can look at it and go, well, it looks like an A&W meal, or it looks a little closer to, you know, nachos, or it looks like then I can be in the ballpark. I can say, well, I have no idea on this one, right. but I'm going to compare it to something I do know, something we've done before, and I'm going to try this. And that gets me in the ballpark and it, it makes Max's blood sugars post meal manageable yeah. so that now we can do the, the bumping and nudging that you talk about rather than this, you know, runaway freight train, that right. nothing I mean, is helping. There is nothing maybe more confusing than seeing a blood sugar that's 280, putting what you think is a massive amount of insulin on it and watching it go to 260 and then bounce back to 280 oh. again. Oh it, yeah. Yeah. Then your brain's just like fried because you're only yeah. thinking correction factor and not considering any of the other things that are happening. And it, then you're just there. And before we started analyzing this, had no idea. Like I might think, oh yeah, it's fat. But then when you think 64 grams of fat, that is that puts my understanding on an entirely different level for mm -hmm. me to go, oh, that's why when an, one unit would normally work and I gave him three units thinking, oh, let's watch for the low. That's why it didn't even touch his blood yeah, sugar. Right. Because, it's because we're talking about this astronomical amount of fat. Right. Because, and obviously Arden's insulin, um, insulin to carb ratio is different than other people's, but because a large French fry from five guys for Arden needs 28, 20, 30, like 32 units, units of yep. insulin, 32 units of insulin. Her pump only holds uh, 200 for three days. <laughs> right. So right. I can, I, I, and so, um, anyway, this was really great. Did we not say anything that you wanted to say or did I find a way through it all? Um, I think so. Let me just look and see. Yeah. Look at your notes, please. Um, I don't usually have people with notes, so check it out. Let's make, <laughs> let's make sure we're good. Again, systematic. Um, one other thing to think about is there are times that we would have, he'd say, make himself nachos for lunch. And then we'd have pizza for supper or, um, you know, we'd go out to McDonald's for supper. If this happens twice in a day, the, 
the effect is compounded. Mm. So like if I sort of imagine that, you know, his first is not just for lunch, there's some fat swimming around in his blood and that's making things a little bit harder to deal with, but we covered it and things look great, but underneath the surface, he's still got that extra fat in his blood. Now we go and we pile on more fat. That's going to need even more Mm -hmm. of a, of a hit. So yeah, you're more insulin, more insulin really applies if you're eating fat more than once in a day, which doesn't happen incredibly often for us, but we've seen the effect. Yeah. I, um, and I think I already, oh, sorry, go no, ahead. No, I was going to say, I see it with Arden during her period, like when she gets like cravings, sometimes cravings, um, they match each other. So it goes, you, you know, I've had days that have gone from nachos to Chinese food, you, you know, right. and you're just right. like, well, this is going to be. Like, it really does feel like, you know, like, like the greatest football team of all times has shown up to play you and you're like, okay, uh, I guess we're going to lose. Let's try not to lose by too much. <laughs> you know, like, and that's where you, you know, when you, if you normally do Chinese food and you go, well, this is how many units it needs and we need to extend it over this many hours. The day that you have Chinese food after nachos, you need to ramp that up. It'll change. Yeah. Or at least we find that we do because the effect is is cumulative. It's 100%. compounding. I definitely see that too. Okay, I'm sorry, I cut you off. You're going to say something else. No, I think that that might be. I think we've, um, I think we've addressed everything cool. else that cool. I've got here. Well, Jenny was right. You yeah. were the right person to talk to about this. So, oh, thank you. I have to say this, this has too. been a pleasure. No, oh, I I had a good time. But let me say this because I want to mention again. It's waltzingthedragon.com or .ca. Um, yeah. There'll be links in the show notes for you to go find it. I'm going to try to talk Michelle into the day that this goes up to uh, like popping up in the Facebook group and chatting with people about it if she wants to. Uh, I would love to. But I want to say this, and I mean this genuinely. She would never say this out loud, but there are not that many places where Jenny directs people for diabetes advice. So oh, you made my day because I really was, admire her. She is a smart cookie and has great advice. It was a big deal. She's I, I've outed her now. She's only ever told me that privately, but there are very few sources that Jenny will tell somebody about. So that she brought yours up honored. was a big deal. So I uh, that's how I knew right away to reach out to you because if she was willing to say it out loud, uh, then I knew it was going to be a good conversation. So thank you very, very much. This was amazing. Thank you for your time, Scott. Are you kidding me? You stop it. This is this is all. All the thanks <laughs> go to you. A huge thank you to one of today's sponsors, Gvoke Glucagon. Find out more about Gvoke Hypopen at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. You spell that G V O K E G L U C A G O N dot com forward slash juice box. The episode was also sponsored by the Contour Next One Blood Glucose Meter. Learn more at contournext.com forward slash juicebox. There's links in the show notes and links at juiceboxpodcast.com for these and all of the sponsors. You can support type 1 diabetes research and the Juicebox podcast. The T1D Exchange is looking for type 1 adults and type 1 caregivers who are U.S. residents to participate in a quick survey that can be completed in just a few minutes from your phone or your computer. After you've finished with the questions, and they're really simple questions, I did them in maybe seven or eight minutes, you'll be contacted annually just to see if there's any updates to your information and to be asked any further questions if further questions exist. This is 100% anonymous, completely HIPAA compliant, and it does not require you to ever see a doctor or go to a remote site. Now, every time someone completes the process using my link, t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box, you'll not only be benefiting people living with type 1 diabetes, but you'll be helping out the podcast. Just use my link in the bio, then click on join our registry now, and then just simply complete the survey. T1D Exchange research has led to increased insurance coverage for blood glucose meter strips, changes in the American Diabetes Association's guidelines for pediatric A1C goals, and even helped get Medicare coverage of CGM devices. So if you've ever wanted to help out people living with type 1 diabetes or the podcast, or maybe both, this would be a simple, quick, and safe way to do all of that. T1DExchange.org forward slash juice box. Okay, now I'm on Michelle's website. 
Waltzing the Dragon. And she has examples here for you. This is very clear and easy to follow. She's got a lot of examples of which foods are high in saturated fat here. She talks specifically about the what the Warsaw approach is. And she walks you through an example. Number one, identify how much fat and protein the food contains. And she has an example here that she used on the podcast. It's an item that has three grams of protein and 14 grams of fat. Number two, you convert into units of energy. It's kcal from protein equals protein in grams times four kcal grams. Now, when you see that, you're just like, oh, my God. I don't know about you. My brain goes, oof, I guess everybody's blood sugar is going to be high because Scott ain't figuring this out. But if you've got the kind of brain who loves this, go look at it because it is incredibly well. I know uh, when I look at it, I think if my brain worked this way, I know I would appreciate how this is being shown to me. Number three, calculate the total calories. Number four, calculate the fat protein units. Number five, how long to extend the bolus. It walks you through it very easily. Step-by-step instructions. Gives you the amount of extra insulin that you need, step six. And then it talks about the end result. She says here, to make a long story short, in this example, to cover fat and protein, her son had this bar after supper. She would first give the usual bolus for the carbs before he starts eating. Then later, she would deliver an extra 2.3 units of insulin in this example in an extended bolus that covered a duration of three hours. So you've heard her talk about it now. For an hour, we've been talking about it in the podcast. If you want to see her step-by-step instructions, there's a link in the show notes for this episode, and there's a link at juiceboxpodcast.com for, again, for this episode, 471. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to be paying closer and closer attention to how I'm using this idea in our life. And I'm going to come up with a way to say it that doesn't involve adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. Um, I'm going to come up with a way to talk to you about this, and I'll be sharing it as soon as I absolutely can. You know me, I'm just like, there's a lot of fat in this, and then I you know, I just go, "Eh, it's a lot more insulin. And then I stretch it out. You've heard me talk in the diabetes pro tip series. You know how I do it. Um, if you've liked this and never heard of the diabetes pro tip series, I really think you should check it out because if you like this conversation, you'll love those conversations. The diabetes pro tip episodes begin at episode 210. They're available at juiceboxpodcast.com in your podcast players. Or if you just like to see a list of them, diabetespro-tip.com. I hope you found this interesting. If you did, please share the show with someone else. And of course, check out Michelle's website, waltzingthedragon.ca or .com. And there's, of course, links right there in the show notes and at juiceboxpodcast.com to this exact article. I'll talk to you soon.